Well, hello there, and when I say fear, what a great joy it is to have you yet one more time. Karibu Harvest Conversations. My name is Brian Mashigati. I am happy to be with you yet one more time. And just for the culture, make some noise. <laughs> That's how to do it. Okay, instead today I have with me Pastor Jack on this side and yeah. Pastor Shad on this side. And we've been going into the book of Jude. Now, I can't give you a previously on the book of Jude because, man, we've gone in, gone in, go deep, man. It's not deep. <laughs> but you can go back to our previous videos and let us um, just catch up, yeah? If you're catching us right now, please let us know. If you have any questions, continue to send them in. We'll be um, doing a Q&A right towards the end. Okay? Also, share this link with as many people as you can. Let them know that we're about to get started. We continue uh, in the book of Jude. Now, last week, we were handling contending for the faith. We looked at why you need to contend, and we looked at philosophies and ideas and the new age and the um, progressive Christianity and the you know, vibes and manifestation and all those things that are happening that have crept into the church right now and uh, false religions and, you know, all those things, all those what Paul calls high-sounding nonsense. It sounds really great, but it's neither here nor there nor anywhere, yeah? So today we want to look at another thing and allow me to read because we're in the book of Jude. Um, I want to read now from where we are, from verse 4. It says, For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago, I'm using the New King James Version, were marked out for this condemnation, and godly men who turn, their grace, who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the Lord God and our Lord Jesus. Allow me to also read this in the ESV. And it says, For certain people have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were designated for this condemnation ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. And that brings us into our conversation today. We've been talking about contending for the faith. We looked at why contend and why we need to contend in the 21st century. Why the 21st century believer, you and me, and me or you and I need to contend for the faith. And um, Jude brings in a reason here, he says, for, for is like because. Why you need to contend for the faith that was once delivered for all, once for all delivered to the saints is because certain people have crept in unnoticed. This who is calling false teachers. And so we want to just ask ourselves, these false teachers, who are they and why are they false teachers? Why are they false teachers? I think I'd like us to start with why they are false teachers. Okay. I'm going to open it up. Okay, Shad is already on that. So, yeah. Um... Jude would say that the reason why these guys are false is because um, they have perverted the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. And um, earlier, um, Pastor Jack mentioned that when you mess with creed, belief, you will automatically mess with conduct. So, what Jude is telling these guys to guard themselves against is the messing of creed and conduct. So, he's telling them, Manzi, ah, see, wame creepin, and they've brought so much confusion, and now they are perverting the grace of our God into sensuality. They keep on doing things that do not portray them as believers. And so guard against these ones. Watch their fruit. They may say things, but what they profess is not what they practice. And it is very hard for anyone to separate sound doctrine and sound living. So these friends are not sound in their doctrine, so they are not sound in their living. And that's why he would say in verse 5, now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it. So it seems like there is a perversion that is happening on the creed. Why is he reminding them something that he says, although you once knew it, you, you knew what was good, you knew what was sober, you knew what was right. But then in some way it seems like these guys are propagating a doctrine or things 
that are perverting uh, the Christian conduct. And so I believe that Jude is against conduct, the conduct of these people. Why? Because their creed has also been affected. Yeah. Wow. Pastor yeah. Jack, you want to jump on that? Um, the who? Who these who people are? Why are they false teachers? Um, I, I think, I, I don't know if you allow me, or you could probably read for us what is coming up next after what he has said. Chapter 5, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Verse 5, but, because sorry, the who five. is uh -huh. there. Yeah. Um, the reason why I'm asking that is so that we can get to know, because um, again, what we said uh, in the previous uh, uh, sessions that we've had, that it is by their character that you know really who and why mm. that, that um, these guys are false teachers. Mm. It's their character that will show. Mm. Again, I repeat, it's, it's, not, it's not their sound teaching or whatever we call sound teaching. It's not their eloquence. It's not their degrees. It's not their suit that they wear that will show you. It's nothing else but their character that will show them, mm. you know? And, and again, that's the, those are the words of Christ. So if you look, for example, let me just go through it. Uh, sorry. Um, verse 5. Though you already knew all this, I'm reading from NIV, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. Mm. Now let's just stop there. Because that's the first group of, um, that's the first character trait that we are looking at, the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it might not appear so, you know, we might reading, be reading and like, hmm, okay, watch out when Pauline end But, Right there is a message in verse 5 that the, the, the reason why Jude mentions the children of Israel is because of disbelief. Mm. And so check out a person who really has some disbelief. You know, the children of Israel were saved by God and they went through the wilderness, a transition to the promised land. Mm -hmm. And when they were transiting, 10 spies, 12 spies were sent to see the promised land. Mm -hmm. Two came with a good report, 10 came with a bad report. And of course the crowd followed the 10. And what did God do? He said because of their Dis unbelief, yeah. uh, disbelief, unbelief, because of their unbelief, I will kill all of them mm -hmm. except the two. And he raised for himself another, another generation who will inherit the promised land. And that's right there, is the first character trait. Mm -hmm. So who is this false prophet? Check out the character. What's the character? unbelief mm. like if you are growing in christ you will realize if someone is really a true believer mm -hmm. you know that's that's the first thing and we can go on and on um, verse 6 talks about angels mm -hmm. you know and the angels who did not keep their position of authority but abandoned their their own home this he has kept in darkness bound with everlasting chains for the judgment on the great day mm -hmm. again angels so we are looking at what what's the character here that that we are looking at it's angels who were Rebellion. what rebellious mm. they did not follow the authority, authority figure that was given to them and we know their story it's in the book of genesis six i think yeah. chapter six yeah? yeah and we know the story of how angels uh, uh looked on to the um, sons of sons men. of men, the daughters of men, and they went down there and had sex with them, and that's where um, those giants, I, they say, mm -hmm. uh, nephilims. That's where uh, they were gotten from, and that was uh, that was besides the order of God, mm. and that's where we get our second character. The character of these false teachers is rebellion, mm. and we can go on. The next verse is talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And really, the prominent thing that we are seeing in Sodom and Gomorrah, when you look at the story of Lot, yeah. is sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. you know? And we realize these guys have tendencies. They will, they will look, from outside, they will look like guys who, um, who are good. Who are good. But we've heard stories. Mm. I, I don't want to go there, but we've had stories. And we've had issues. Mm -hmm. And probably not, not just Kunelia Kuteleza. You're fallen and you've mm -hmm. been restored back mm -hmm. to the fellowship. But these guys, the, the thing, living they're in living in continuous it. sin. They love it. They, they are engrossed in it. Really, they, it's what they are. And that's a character trait. Wow. Immoral people. Mm. And that's, that's what we ought to look out for. That's yeah. what Judy is saying. Yeah. Maybe you can continue with that. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this, is, this is 
this is amazing. I love how you've been able to pick out the characters yeah. of this false teacher from the stories that Jude is giving from the Old Testament. And um, so he says, just to help someone who's following, he says, number one, uh, from the children of Israel, it's unbelief. Uh, from um, from the, the angels, angels it's, it's rebellion. rebellion against authority. And from uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is sexual immorality and pursued and natural desires. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so from verse 8 all the way to uh, verse 11, he builds on the same thought exactly. of explaining this, guys these characters and the, how you will know these guys. And, 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 and maybe you're here and you're wondering, so, yeah, who's, what's happening in our generation? Why, yeah. I, don't, I don't see anyone who's doing these things. And friends, they will manifest themselves, manifest. I used it. <laughs> these characters will manifest themselves differently. Uh, for example, one who uh, uh, has unbelief will, yeah. will, will start professing things that are not biblical. Yeah. They'll become heretic in their presentation of the gospel. They will present man in a, in a very elated view, yeah. very raised up view, extrapolate who man is and then demean who God is. That's to show there's unbelief. They don't actually believe that God can. Then they will, um, um, they hate authority. They are not governed by anyone. They do not, they are not accountable to anyone. They don't report to anyone. They start ministries here and there with, with no backing, with no, nothing. They're just lone rangers. Lone rangers. If you yeah. see anyone who does ministry yeah. on their own, ah, run. run. And then their sensuality, sexual immorality. This, this, um, Paul would say these are um, people who, men who will prey on younger ladies, um, immoral people, men who will um, endorse unnatural desires so that if you hear in your uh, listening to sermons of anyone who endorses unnatural desires for example homosexuality when, 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 when any Christian any Christian preacher any shepherd is asked yeah. what's the take of the Bible on homosexuality? on homosexuality I think they should be straight to what the Bible says. Yeah. So that if you see anyone who tries to take a safe place, they want to be a tickler, they want to mm. please everyone yeah. and sound very politically correct, then have you, please raise your antennas to realize, wow, this guy is not saying what the Bible says. And, and, and so Jude continues to say, this guy is blaspheme, they blaspheme God. They are outrightly heretic and are rebellious against the authority of the word yeah. and the authority of Jesus Christ as sure. their Lord and Master. Sure. That's just to mention a few of the characters that I think are mentioned here. But to add a few, I think these guys are abusers. I think these guys are in it for the profit. People who will do anything for the money. Yeah. They are in it for the profit. They will tell you to plant. They will tell you to send your money and your miracle will... will when your money is coming, your miracle is going to be... It, when it lands, Zidapitana. 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 Mm. I ask guys, what if they collide? What happens? And you don't get anything. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Um, so they are abusers. They are in it for the profit. Um, they are... Div <laughs> They, they divide, divisive people. They divide the unity of the church. Um, Actually, I want, I want to look at uh, what uh, has been mentioned about Balaam. Yeah, please he, talk about yeah. that. He was in it for the profit. Yes, uh -huh. that's, that's a greedy person. Yeah. Because of Greed. what, if, if you look at Exodus, was it Exodus? Yeah. Numbers, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and what he did, um, he did it so that the, he could profit from the children of Israel. Yes. You know, um, and, and that's, that's what the that's false teachers are doing. That's, exa that's exactly what a big bunch of those guys yeah. are doing. Yes. And, and you would think, again, we go back to uh, episode one, if I could call it an episode. Yeah. Uh, 
you go back to that and we were, we were saying how um, that's, that's, that's how you notice them because of the thing that they, they do. Mm -hmm. we, we, are, we, we are doing it for the cash. You know? They are in it for the money. We, we They'll actually the say statements like, Wacha ni kuibie. Kama wanasemanga mimi ni mwizi, wacha sasa ni kuibie. What? I, yeah, I remember Kanyari saying that one of the times that he... <laughs> Wanasema mimi ni mwizi lakini tu maile 310 tuwacha sasa. And you know, and guys will send the money. Um, it's sad, man. It's sad. It's sad. People will sell things. Things that you know are outlately poisonous. Well, I had this in some South African t uh, televangelist. They would sp spray people. Um, they would give them to drink jik. Yeah. A bleaching thing, you know? And they would drink. And it's funny how when that thing is on the shelf of a supermarket, you know it is poisonous. But when the man of God, praise Jesus, <laughs> holds it in his hand, you can drink it. It's crazy. I'll allow me to just jump in there. I don't know. I, if, you, if you're like me, guys, you're, I'm, I'm silent the whole time because I'm like, what? Yeah. What? Allow me to jump in and just ask then, mm -hmm. because there is the place of the shepherd, mm -hmm. of the man of God, mm -hmm. like you say. Mm -hmm. um, Ephesians 4.11 would tell us that he himself, Christ, yeah. gave Give some to some. be yeah. teachers and yeah. apostles and pastors yeah. and evangelists yeah. and the fivefold ministry yeah. for the equipping of the body. Yeah. Um, uh, to equip the saints yes. for the building up of the body. And, yeah. you know. So there is a place of the, of the Christian minister. Yes. Um, such that there is the place to listen to them, to submit to, the, to this delegated authority yes. by God and yes. of God. Um, so there is the place. So where do we sort of draw the line in that uh -huh. we are not being led into destruction, yeah. but I'm also not raising my head, raising my head in defiance yeah. um, because any person that tells me do this, I look at them and I'm thinking, uh, this is an abuser. Yeah. Even though they are telling me that to genuinely care for me. Yeah, you. to genuinely care for me when they yeah. are correcting me and they are telling me stop because nobody really, correction at the moment does not feel, yeah. you know, yeah. like sweetness. Yeah. But the person has been put over me, the steward, the shepherd has been put over me just so that they can, you know, tell me go this way and go this way and yeah. don't do that, stop doing that. And I don't like it. So it's easy for me to lift up my hands in defiance and say, abuser, yeah. liar. Yeah. Illuminatus, yeah. devil, yeah. Yeah. Diablo. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so where do we draw the line? I think that's the question. Um, such, such that we are not going around also calling People. the genuine ones yeah. false teachers yeah. just because they require something of us. Yeah. Because the, it's a, it's, I, th I think in the, in the previous episodes we talked about something like, um, you know, where, where <laughs> we will, we, some will, we've said actually here that they will come in it for the profit yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yet, there are those ones who are outside, your, your shepherd in church, you have a project and they will call on you to actually come and put in money and yeah. be part of a project. Yeah. Yeah. So, for the believer who is thinking, so now how do I know when it is yeah. my good money and yeah. when it is here, person will not a collision, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's a good money. You know, it's a good money. How do I know, how would you because, I mean, I'm asking for a friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd, I'd give the example of the Bereans and Paul. You know how after Paul had presented the gospel to them, they would go back yeah. and see whether what Paul was saying is true? Yeah. I think that's how every one of us should treat the man of God. And it's interesting, yeah? Let me tell you something. Yeah. The Bible, it's, it's, it's sola scriptura. It's the Bible, and it is sufficient. It's all sufficient. It is sufficient, you know, so that what the man of God does is explain this Bible. Just bear, break it down for us. But he is not above the Bible. He does not authenticate the Bible. The Bible authenticates the ministry of the, of the, of the man of God. So that it is all about the Bible and very little to do with the man of God. That you know what gives power and authority to my preaching 
is the word of God. It is the sound doctrine in it. Paul, Paul will tell Timothy, man, stick to this. For you, you have been called as an evangelist. Stick to it. Preach the gospel for what it is. And interestingly, when you preach the gospel for what it is, it will do things. It will break men. The Bible will tell us, give and give cheerfully. So if you keep professing the word of God for what it is, men will give. I actually think that people who are scared that if they preach the word of God for what it is, they think they need to add their own wisdom to enable men to respond in a certain way. That's not true. We can actually preach the word of God for what it is and allow him, allow God to work through his word to convict men, to break men, yeah. to help men find, see things in the church and respond in their capacity. Yeah. So preacher outside there who's having a project and thinking if you keep telling people, you know, love the Lord genuinely, they will not give. Shame on you. They will give because they know that this is the authority for their lives. And if you trust that it is authority, and it is authoritative, and it is sufficient, believe you me, it will do everything that the Lord sends it to accomplish. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think every, just to wrap that up, I think every good pastor and every good preacher will always give room for the believer to check him out yeah. through scripture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deep. That's that's uh, really yeah. profound, uh, and I, and I think that's that's a, that's that's a signature move for every believing, every deep, every um, sound sound uh, preacher. Mm -hmm. That if you think whatever I'm saying is false, mm -hmm. don't follow what I'm saying. Follow the word. F follow the word of God. Yes. That's that's the that's that's an absolute aki <laughs> So yeah, that's that's what that's what. Uh, uh, the it is all about. Yeah. And uh, if if you are if your pastor is totally totally above scripture, above, uh, scripture men pray for him, because <laughs> because actually the Bible says uh, it's Jude that says um, them allow God to have mercy upon yeah. to get to get uh, the, the the book of Jude allow God to have mercy upon them. Yeah. And 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 I, I would really pray for I know there are believers out there who are starting to have doubt about what has been presented to them yeah. every other Sunday. Yeah. And we are going to get to that, how, yeah. to, how to deal with that. Yeah. But let me just say that for them who are in that space, for them who are in that place, um, pray. Pray and ask the Lord, Lord, um, either if you would allow me to go to a Bible-believing church and uh, a man of God who, or I don't know, maybe change this man of God. Let him see the light of scripture. And let him allow the Bible to speak of itself through his sermon. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's a prayer we ought to make as believers. Yes. Yeah. I think wow. I, that's, that's really oh, profound. You, Just the, the minister, the place of the minister, and, and these guys speaking as ministers themselves. Just the place of a minister allowing themselves to, allowing you also to check them using scripture. I think yeah. that's really powerful. Uh, putting it together with something else that um, I think Shad said, um, that the minister or the pastor does not authenticate the word of God. That the word of God is authentic in itself. It yeah. stands alone without crutches. Yeah. But you release it. Yesterday we were talking with these guys and saying, you release it like unchained, like a lion. Mm -hmm. It will go in, in the sheep's pen, and it will do what lions do. Yeah. So don't put it on a leash. Yeah. So the, the word of God is able to stand alone, alone. such that I think now what, what comes through as we say this is then that if the Bible says something is wrong, it is wrong, yeah. even if your pastor does it. Imagine. Yeah. I, I like a statement that says that if the Bible has an opinion about something, yours does not count. Oh, wonderful. It, it, wow. It does not. Wow. So it doesn't matter what my life looks like right now. Yeah. If scripture says, it doesn't matter what I'm feeling in my body. Yeah. If scripture says, um, whatever inclinations I think I have yeah. um, in my mind or, um, you, well, 
Paul will break it down to the to the church at Corinth in Second Corinthians ten as uh, emotions and um, loose thoughts and impulses. Yeah. Whatever those things look like, yeah. if they are not godly, if Scripture speaks against them. Yeah. Whether I feel them from dusk to dawn does not change the fact that they are still ungodly. It does yeah. not. And so for me to, the repetition of my inclinations does not make them right. Yes. If scripture says they are wrong, they are wrong from the day I'm born to the day that I die, yeah. whether I practice them or not. Yeah. And so my place is then to use um, scripture as the lens against which I look at my life wow. or to use it as the sieve such that anything that goes through scripture and comes out on the other side, this then is that good. is yeah. that wow. is good. Yeah. Everything that remains up here, I'm not trying to force it yeah. down na kijiko ni yeah. ina pita uko ndani. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, you know, yeah, this could pass. Yeah. We are not excusing our lives just because of repetition or cycles. Just because I've been in something for so long yeah. does not change it yeah. or make it good. Because we are talking about practice. Yes. Um, the false teachers are false teachers by practice. Yeah. Um, doctrine true, but also by practice. And he said, if whatever, I, I like, I like um, uh, something that Spurgeon quotes and says that uh, if the citadel is taken, the whole city is taken. Yes. Whatever takes the heart, then the mind and the body the follows. Yeah. Yeah. So if whatever you believe on the inside of you is what runs, has run of the house, yeah. I think that's... Yeah, I've, I've got to, sorry. I've got to mention mm -hmm. uh, one character mm -hmm. that has been given here, and probably we might just overlook it, because mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says, "For he, they have um, what to them?" Verse eleven, they have taken the way of Cain, yeah. mm. and, I, and I was looking at at Cain, and what was the way of Cain? Mm -hmm. And and the story of Cain, we all know the story of Cain, mm. and he was In Genesis 4. yes, and he was uh, God was like. Uh, where is your brother? Mm. You know, and the answer is, am I my brother's, brother's keeper? keeper? Yeah. And I've got to say about the man of God, who we all are here, and the guys who are listening out there, I've got to say that if we don't, if we do profess to be pastors and shepherds, you know, shepherds, mchungaj, mm. If we, if we profess to be that, to and we are not taking care oh. of the people of God, then that's legit false teacher. Yeah. Like, if we are there and not there for our people. sheep, yeah. mm -hmm. for the people, and Paul says it over and over again, you, who's a shepherd, take care. Again, the conversation we were having about Peter. Yeah. And Jesus, Do you love me? Do you love me? And I guess one of the biggest things I can say about uh, the false prophets, uh, false teachers, zero they love. They don't care. Zero love. They're, they're in it for, for themselves. Yeah. They don't care about what the other person would, would, would do. They don't care about their congregation. Yeah. Wow, I, I love that. Wow, that's interesting. Wow. It, it, and, and, and I think verse 12 would say, these are hidden reefs. Wow. At your feast, as they feast with you, yeah. so that if there's anyone who's thinking that those false teachers are very far off, they are guys outside there. They are hidden, and they feed with us. We love them. We love their books. Mm -hmm. We quote them. Author. Ni authors were deep, were serious. Ni ma preachers ngori to na wapenda viba sana. And then he says, um, they are waterless clouds. You know, they they have it. They seem to have it, but they are not producing anything. And he says, fruitless trees, wild. Waves, and then it says they are wandering stars. And I think when we look at our lives and look at the people we follow, the channels we've subscribed to, ah, man, it's, it's very close. It's, it's, it's so close that it could be your senior pastor, it could be your Bible study Bible leader, study. it could be. Your, your prayer, youth your youth pastor. <laughs> I, I want to, to follow that up again as, as we talked about, you know, what, what you're saying, that it, it's right 
right it's within the circle, imagine. it's right where you are. Yeah. And then now, of all saying all those things, to now turn the lens and say, it could be me. It could be me. I, yeah. I could easily be, and I know we might say, or somebody might say that, oh, but I'm not, I'm not a leader, ah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a teacher. So let's speak as we bring this to a close, our time is up, let's speak to the responsibility of the believer yeah. today yeah. in making sure that they are truly contending for the faith. But before looking at them, you're looking at me. Yeah, man, I, I, I'd say the Bible, the Bible would tell us in the verse that we started with uh, First Peter chapter 3, honoring Christ in your heart. Yeah. Man, I pray that you will honor, I will, it's my prayer every day that I will honor Christ in my heart. You know, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave this God I, li I love. Bind my ever wandering heart to you, O oh Lord, because I feel it. It is easy to sway and go so far from that which is true. The Bible would tell us in the book of Corinthians that if you think you're strong, be careful lest you fall, you know, so that it goes so straight. It, it is directed to us before you look at anyone and tell them to remove the kaspak that is in their eye, remove the log, understand the reality that, you know what, Chad, you could be, you could be this false teacher. You could be the one who is not subjected to the word of God and allowing the word of God to shape your life. Yeah. It is very easy. And it doesn't mean that it's only the... the, the the, the preachers that are false, you can be a false convert. She breaking other people's life by the things you do, your conduct, wow. so that your conduct has to be in accordance to the decrees and the commands of the Lord. So that it's, it's just not out there. No, it is even in your very life. Have you looked at yourself? The Bible will tell us in the book of James that man, when you read the word of God, that we should be doers of the word of God. For if we read the word of God and do nothing about it, we are like men who look at themselves on the mirror and immediately forget. Yeah. It says that this word should shape us. It should shape our very life so that I shouldn't be pre reading the word of God to preach. No, I should read the word of God for it to transform my life. For from the transformation of my life, from the things that are in my heart, from the love, relationship, and devotions that I have with my God, then, from the abundance of the heart, then the mouth, then I will live in a way that glorifies my God. Wow. Yeah. I, I, wow, that's, that's amazing, man. Um, I love the attitude of John the Baptist. Um, he's baptizing people. He has his own group of disciples. Yeah. And he is approached by one of the disciples. And one of the disciples says, See, there's that guy who, who you baptized yeah. across the Jordan. Yeah. And he is, has his following. Yeah. He has his own disciples. And they are baptizing. Yeah. And are you not worried? I'm just paraphrasing. Yeah. And what, what does John say? He say that's... That's exactly what I want. That I may decrease. decrease and that he may increase. And that's, that's, that's absolutely amazing, especially for us who are ministers. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in whatever level you are a minister, whatever level, or people who are in service, that, that we who are the self in us, that we may decrease and that Christ and whatever he does oh. and his purpose yes. may be on top of mine. That's, that's the prayer. Actually, that's what sanctification is. It's all about. Yes, it's, uh, that's, that's what it's all about. That we may go down and we may say it and we may say it even in worship songs. But the practical bit of it, the, the thing that we ought to do for us to decrease is a, is a whole new ball game. It's, it's a consistent, intentional submission to the master. And that it's an increasing of you being a servant and a slave to yes. Christ. So that he might, he might continuously build you up for you to become like him. Wow. You know, that's, and that's, 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 that's the only way 
we, we even us who are ministers can turn from false yeah. to true. Yeah. Imagine that, that and, and again, it's not just for ministers, it's everyone, for everyone. For everyone. We, we yeah. realize the place of, of how prone, like you're saying, how prone we are. Everybody is at the risk of falling right into the falsehood, yeah. either by doctrine or by practice. Yeah all of us and so that puts all of us like like Jude says all these things are for us yeah. who have been called and who are loved and, kept. and who are kept yeah. so all of us have the responsibility to daily die to self die to self ah, to daily so submit ourselves to his yeah. means of cleansing to daily call our hearts to account and just check in with God daily to allow the holy spirit to call us out of our messes daily to show us that I am not above, that those teachers are problematic and this teacher is good. Or oh, those teachers are bad, but I am a believer. Actually, yeah. that's what the Pharisees were. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so to somebody that might be joining us on today, and you maybe have not realized your place in practice. Maybe you've been living your life um, you even point a finger at other people. You are doing it right. But you've never really paused to look at how prone you are to fall into this thing. Maybe by your lifestyle, maybe by your practice, you are a false teacher through and through. Mm -hmm. Or you, are, um, you continue to carry out the theme of falsehood through your life. Mm -hmm. And so we want to give you the opportunity today as we bring this session to a close to just make that prayer and ask, ask the Lord to... To remember mercy over you. It reminds me of the words of a song, and I'm, I'm going to sing it as we bring this to a close. It says, um, Oh, to grace, how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be Let this love, Lord, like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to Thee Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Is my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. God, he's to my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Lord, we make that prayer for ourselves today and for every person that tunes in. We ask that, Lord Jesus Christ, because we realize how prone we are to leave you, the God that we love, how prone we are to live lives that don't bring glory to your name and that don't make you happy. We realize that today. We pray that, Lord Jesus Christ, you would take our hearts as we offer them to you today and that you would seal them for your courts, Lord Jesus. You would seal them for your use. You would seal them that other people looking at us may desire the victorious God of our salvation. But dear God, not just other people, that you looking at us would be excited and proud, even take pleasure in everything that we do because our actions, our practice, our beliefs, Lord Jesus, and the occupants of our mental real estate bring glory and honor to your name. We make this prayer for ourselves and we make it for every person that joins us on today. We want to be wholly yours, Lord Jesus, because this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for staying with us to this end, guys. We still have some more. Yeah. Uh, from the book of Jude. Yeah. We are going to be coming back to you next week <laughs> again from the book of Jude. I sure do hope that you are learning. If you have more questions, again, yes. questions, yeah. please send them in. We're going to be rounding this up again and just answering those questions uh, at the very, very, very end of all this. Tunapenda. Zanda. Kabisa. Amen. Until next time, God bless you. God bless Baraka. you.